recording. Sounds good. Thank you all for coming today. Um, my assistant is here. His name is Tad. He likes to come over and get attention because he's hungry. Um, he's not very helpful. But um, today we're going to start in a seated position. Let me just start our Instagram live. Let me just make sure y'all can hear me. Um, I can see Laura. Can you wave so I know that you can hear me, Laura? Thank you. All right, cool. So we're starting today in a seated position, doing a, a breath called Bastrika, Pranayama. So it's meant to start to energize the body, uh, energize the nervous system, and kind of get your blood pumping and get your core warm. So we start by lifting the arms up, open the palms, fingers out, and we exhale, bring the arms down, make fists, all right? So we're doing 10 of those. Go ahead, inhale. And rest, take a breath in, exhale, bring your palms down, palms facing up, thumbs down, wrap the fingers around the thumbs, press the knuckles together, Take a deep inhale and hold it in. Sip in a little more. And a little more. Hold it. Exhale big. Take a breath in. Bring your hands down to the floor, breath out. Hold it out. Exhale a little bit more. And a little bit more. Hold it out and breath in. Exhale, release, and let's begin again. Inhale, reach up. And rest again, breath in. Breath out, hold it out. Thumbs down, wrap the fingers around, knuckles together. Inhale in. Sip in a little more, and a little more. Exhale out, breath in, hands down, breath out, hold it out. Exhale a little more, and a little more. Hold it out. Release, inhale, nice one more round, inhale, inhale to start. And begin. And rest, hands down, thumbs down, wrap the fingers around, deep inhale in, hold it in. Zip in a little more. And a little more. Hold it in. Exhale, release, hands down, inhale. Exhale all the way out, hold it out. Exhale a little more and a little bit more. Release, inhale. <sighs> nice. We're gonna try one more thing as we're seated here. And it has to do with that breathing exercise because it's how I set up for a different kind of um, yogi practice. So something I like to do if I'm having lower back pain or I'm having digestive issues is this, um, I actually forget the yoga name for it, but I'll show you how to do it and I'll look it up and I'll put it on the YouTube video, the name of it. Um, we start by taking an inhale and just watch for now. And we take a big exhale out the way we just did. And we let it all out to the point where we can't let out any more air. I keep the breath out, but what I do is, and I'm gonna stand up just to show you, I draw the belly in, and it's, I can't talk while I do this, but I draw the belly in while the breath is totally out, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like, and I'll have to lift up my shirt. Taking a breath in, exhale all the way. <sighs> you can tell that there's a huge change in the way my stomach looks. And that's obviously not Uddiyana Bandha, if you're familiar with Uddiyana Bandha, which means it's a, it's a lock of the belly towards the spine. 
when I say Uriyata Bandha during a practice, I just mean suck the belly in. I don't mean let all the air out. But if you try that, why don't you go ahead and give that a try? So take a breath in and let it all out. Out a little more, add a little more. Now keep the breath out and draw your belly button towards your spine. You might remember that all of a sudden from middle school when you're at the beach and you're trying to suck it in for your friends with the bikinis on or whatever. I don't know if that relates to you at all, but you'll feel a huge hollow belly, hollowness of your belly more than normal. And sometimes you can kind of roll the belly up and down and that's kind of more of an advanced thing. Some yogis can go side to side, but that's something you can try at home and just kind of try this week. Try it on an empty stomach if you can. I probably should have done that as a preface, preface but um, keep trying that exercise at home. It's really fun and it's really good for your digestive system. And sometimes I feel it relieves lower back pain. So we're gonna meet back on our knees, um, on our shins, this next stretch. We're gonna stretch out the wrist. Fingertips come down to the floor, wrists forward, and just slowly press the wrists down towards the floor. The wrists don't have to touch. You can even start to bend the elbows for a deeper stretch. Close the eyes and just breathe here. Maybe you feel one hand a little more stiff than the other. Two more deep breaths. And start to release, roll out the wrist. Nice. Go ahead, grab your strap. Again, I probably should get a real strap. This is looking very sad, this long sleeve shirt. So we're gonna bring it above our head. Start nice and wide before you know what your limit is here with your shoulders. You don't wanna injure yourself. Take an inhale to lift, exhale forward. Nice and easy. Inhale, lift. This is when it gets a little tricky. Exhale, back. And if you find this is painful, not good. Maybe bend one elbow, bring it back up, and widen it even more. Inhale, up again. Exhale, forward. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Now stay back, but about shoulder height with the arms. Start to bend the right elbow. Maybe you start to lean the head over to the left. Lift the head up, bend the other elbow and straighten the first one that was bent. Let the head fall over to the right. One more time, switch the bend of the elbows, tilt the head. And one more time. Then both, press the arms up and down and forward. Nice, move the strap to the side. I believe that's all we need the strap for unless I have some kind of epiphany later that we should use it again. So we're gonna come onto our backs. Hug the knees into the chest. Rock a little side to side. Let the knees fall over to the left side. Let the right arm come to right side. Let the left hand rest on the outer right thigh. Look over to the right elbow. Knees back to center, knees fall to the right. It's a nice gentle twist to wake up your spine. Look over to the left elbow. Lift the knees back up, press the feet down, lift the hips for bridge pose. Press the arms down by your sides. We're just activating the core a little bit more after that breath exercise. Now stay in this pose. I'm gonna go lock the meeting so we don't have any more hackers today or any more hackers in general, but stay in your bridge and start to do little pulses with the hips up to the sky. You can do them slow, you can do them fast. As long as you feel it, in the core. All right, we're locked. 
No scary people are allowed in this meeting. And press up for stillness, no more pulsing. And come all the way down. We're gonna cross our left knee over our right for eagle legs. You don't have to tuck that, um, those left toes behind the right shin, but you can if it's there for you. Left thigh is on top, right arm is underneath for eagle arms and eagle legs. So we're doing eagle abs, as you can tell. I'm gonna start with 12, lifting for one. Keep the shoulders lifted, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 to hold for three, two, and one. Release, switch sides immediately. Switch the wrap of the arms and legs and begin 12 again. Lift for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and hold for three, two, and one. Lower down. Whew. Feet to the floor, arms reach out to the sides, make fists, and have the pinky side of your fist on the floor next to you. You can also do uh, cactus arms if you don't have enough room for that. You're gonna lift the feet up, 90 degree angle with your knees, plastic your feet facing the front of your room, and let the knees fall to the left side, but don't let the left knee touch the floor, hover them. Oh, Tad's here to watch. Hover the knees and lift. And over to the right, hover the right knee. So obviously you're pressing down into that right arm right now to prevent the right leg from falling. Lift the knees, other side, press the left hand, hover the knees. Let's do 10 more. Lift for one, lift, two, lift, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Lift back up. Hug the knees into the chest. We're going to start to rock up. And we're going to meet up on our feet, lifting our butts off the floor in a squat. Tuck your toes. We're going to balance on our toes for toes pose. Balancing on our toes. Heels are lifted. Hands to heart center. So try to, um, I guess, squat up, sit up, nice and tall. Press the hands together, elbows apart. Maybe you fall here, maybe all fall here. You're probably shaking a little, that's okay. Try to twist and lift over to the left. Maybe open the arms. Maybe you already feel inspired to take a side crow. No pressure, just an idea. I don't think I'm ready to do a side curl right now. Hands back to center. Ooh. Look forward and to the right. Maybe you want to open the arms here. Oh my God, my cats are looking at each other. How cute. Arms are open. Maybe that side crow happens here. If you did it one side, not the other, that's okay. Your body's not gonna be totally thrown off if you do one side, not the other for one day. Hands back to center and look forward. Take a deep breath in to stay. Exhale to stay. <sighs> From here, we're gonna come down hands and knees. Now here's where you can use a block if you have one. I do have one, I will use it, but you don't need to use it. So everyone starts. Lowering their forearms down. Now we're gonna take the right thumb underneath the left armpit, left thumb underneath the right armpit. So that's where you want your shoulders to be when you do the forearm plank and forearm poses that we're about to do. I know that everyone loves forearm poses. That's sarcasm, they're very hard to do, but we'll get through it. It's a great ab workout. Now lower the arms down. And if you have the block, you grab the block. If you don't, your palms come down to the floor. Simple as that. So, arms are down, hands are down, and we lift the feet behind us, lift the knees, the forearm plank. Already you might start to be sweating like I am. 
Maybe you start to shift forward and back, pressing into the heels and kind of pointing and pressing into the toes. Couple more breaths. And start to lift the hips, walk the feet a little bit closer for dolphin pose, which is just downward dog, but on your forearms. <sighs> Deep breaths here. Feet can be about six inches apart. <sighs> start to get a little acquainted with this pose. It can be very strange, a very strange feeling to put all your weight into your shoulders. Try to lift your hips up a little bit lifting the tailbone, looking back at your toes. Walk the feet closer together, maybe the toes touch, lift the right leg up. Whew. And lower down, switch sides. Left leg lifts. Lower down that left foot. Hold for three more breaths. Let's go ahead and come down for a break. Knees lower and sit back into your child's pose. Arms can be forward or by your side. It's really up to you. You can always stick a block, pillow, book underneath your forehead, whatever you have. You can rock your forehead a little side to side. Two more deep breaths to stay. Start to come up. Let's come into our tabletop and inhale, look forward. Exhale, tuck the toes, press back. Child's pose. It's kind of an exaggerated cat cow, almost like a child's pose, too. Inhale forward through a tabletop, leaning a little bit over the wrist. Exhale, press back with the hips. Inhale. And exhale back. Let's come back, regular tabletop, hands and knees. Let's come back into our side plank. This time, if you have the block, let's move to the side. So again, you can check your setup here. I hate to say it, but thumbs in your armpits. <laughs> forearms lower down, lift the knees, forearm plank. Now let's take it a little bit uh, to the next level now. Come to the right side of your right foot, stack the feet. Maybe you start to lift the left arm, side plank. If you're feeling creative, maybe you start to lift that back left foot. You can do tree pose with that back, or the, yeah, the left foot. Reaching a little higher, other side, left arm lowers. Over to the left side of the left foot, reach the right arm to the sky, reach. Lifting for three, two, and one, lower down. Lower the knees. Hands under shoulders, palms to the floor. Tuck the toes and then we're just walking the feet to hands. Take a forward fold, maybe heel toe your feet nice and wide. Grab opposite hands to opposite elbows and sway left and right. Let the head hang down, nice and heavy. If you want a shoulder opener here, you can bring the arms behind you, either with a strap or interlace, just with your fingers. And you can open up here. They might flip behind your head. They might come nowhere near. If you've had shoulder injuries, this is sometimes this is a really hard pose. Take two more breaths, release the head, shake it out now. Nodding, yes. Slowly lower down if you're interlaced to the hands. Heel to the feet under the hips. Inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. And the knees inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. 
couple more times. Inhale halfway, make a number seven with your body. Maybe you start to bring a little more core and thigh strength into this, reaching forward. Palms start to face up. You can always bend the knees a lot or a little. And fold. One more time, let's do it just like that. Bend the knees a little or a lot. Sweep the arms up. Reach up and forward. Holding. Maybe you start to straighten the legs here. It feels okay. If not, just bring a bend. Nice. Fold. Now really bend the knees, sweep the arms up, slowly press up to standing, reaching up. Exhale, Sama Sitihi, hands to heart center. Move the hips a little left and right, bending one knee at a time. Come to stillness, inhale, reach up. And forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. We're going to do a sun A. Step one foot back, then the other. Something to remember if you are someone that jumps back into plank, you should never be jumping back into plank, which is something I learned kind of recently, actually. And the reason being, if you want to lower your knees while you listen, you can go ahead and do that. You don't want to jump back into plank because you're putting a lot of pressure into the low spine because that's where the, you know, kind of the shock is it kind of absorbs the shock of that pose. Not to mention that you're probably gonna be locking your elbows when you jump back. So you're just kind of putting a lot of weight into the joint there and the elbow. You wanna jump back if you do jump back into a low push up. The reason being the triceps kind of catch that and not the lower back and not the elbow joint. So just something to remember if that's part of your practice. So we're in plank pose. And when we come high to low push up, you can always lower the knees down first for a modify. And if you don't like to do that either, you can skip the whole vinyasa and meet us all into down dog. It does mean that you stay here for longer though. So that's something to remember as well. We'll all meet into down dog. Take four deep breaths to stay, spread the fingers, lower the heels down to the floor, shake the head out. Oh my God, my cats are cleaning each other back there still. I hope you can see it. You can a little bit, that's adorable. Now we're gonna slide forward into plank again and lift up downward dog. Slide forward, lift up. Now try to make your exhale go with forward plank. Inhale, lift up and stay. Stay here for a few breaths. And since I have my spine leggings on, oh, they're fighting now. And since I have my spine leggings on, I'll kind of tell you why you inhale and exhale during certain poses like that. The reason why you want to inhale coming forward, exhale coming back, is because what you're doing is you're exaggerating what the spine already does when you're breathing. If you think about your breath in, you're kind of lifting the chest. Anything about your breath out, you're kind of rounding it out. Look forward, take one step forward and meet the other foot forward. Inhale halfway, exhale, fold. Press up, lift up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Let's do one more sun A, faster, inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway. Exhale, if you want to do that jump back to low, be my guest. Inhale, upward facing to downward facing. Four breaths to stay. And look forward, half step or jump forward, both feet to the front. Inhale, halfway lift, Urdva. Exhale, Utanasana. And the knees sweep up. Hands to heart center. Come right into chair pose, squat. And lift the toes up off the floor, just so we know we're putting more weight into the heels than the toes. You can press into the palms, let the elbows fly out to the sides. 
sit down as low as you want. The lower, the better, really. Now we're gonna twist over to the left. You might find that that right arm is kind of touching the outside of the left thigh as you do this pose. Start to lift that right heel up and down. And this is a really hard pose to do in a second, I'll show you. Lift that right foot up and down. Feel the weight transferring more into your left foot. Now slowly start to lift that right foot up. See if you can step it back for a lunge in your twist. Stay here. If you have a block, you can grab it, bring it to the outside of that left foot for that right hand. You can take the left hand, to, uh, fingertips pointing down, the heel of your hand can sit on that lower spine, just to encourage a little roundness of the low back. It also helps you stay a little sturdy. <sighs> bring the hands back to your twisted lunge and step the right foot forward. Let's try it again. Heel toe, lift the right heel up and down. Step back. Maybe you open up. Or you lower that left hand, the heel of the hand to the lower back. Hands back together, step forward. Now we're gonna move to the other side so you're gonna see my back, I apologize. Twist to the right. Look over to the right side of your room. Heel lifts, left heel lifts up and down off the floor. Start to feel the weight transfer into your right foot and step it back. Left foot steps back for a, low, for a high lunge. <sighs> Take a couple breaths. Maybe the left hand lowers or right hand lifts too. Maybe the heel of the right hand to the lower back. Encourage that groundedness. Also encourages an openness in that left hip the front of the hip. Right arm reaches up, hands back together, set the left foot forward. Whew. One more time, I know you're feeling the burn. Uh -huh. Lift that left heel up and down, step it back. Whew. Left hand lowers maybe, maybe that right arm reaches to the back. Hands back together, step the left foot forward. Forward fold, Whew. wiggle the knees, bending and straightening. <sighs> Just get a little bit of that out of the thighs. Shake the head out. And from here, we're gonna have the hands come down to the floor. Step back for a plank, lower the knees. Then just take it all the way down onto your belly. <laughs> Now, I just want to add that I, one of my teachers is David Vendetti uh, and Todd from South Boston Yoga, and I've been taking their online classes on Vimeo. I think that's how you say the app. So I'll leave a link in the YouTube uh, when I upload it. Um, but I took this class of David's this week, and it was super amazing. And a couple things I added to my class today just because I was so inspired by it. So here's one of the things he did, which I love to do. We're gonna start with locust pose. <sighs> Sorry, I'm out of breath. That lunges, those lunges really did it for me. We're gonna reach the arms back, palms facing down. Lift the shoulders to start off the floor. You can still keep pressing the tops of the feet down into the floor as you lift the shoulders. You might even decide that you can interlace the fingers and lift from there. It's a much deeper stretch. Maybe you grab your strap and you do it with that. Maybe you look up a little bit, maybe down. Now start to lift the feet off the floor. Now I wanna just say, here's something that David says, my teacher. If you have sticky outy bits for genitalia, you might wanna tuck it underneath before you come into this pose. I totally stole that line, I think it's brilliant. So anyways, we come back into our locust pose. Lifting the shoulders, lifting up for five, four, three, two, lift up high for one, whew, and come down, turn your cheek to one side, release the hands, 
Take a couple breaths. Turn your cheek to the other side. <sighs> My assistant needs to come here. He's being lazy. All right, next move. Another locust pose, but we're gonna do cactus arms or goal post arms. I'm not much of a sport person, but I guess that's what a goal post looks like. We start by pressing the tops of the feet down to the floor, lifting the chest, and then lifting the arms. Palms can face down, you can look down. Press the toes down to the floor. If you wanna start lifting the legs, why are you dead? Lifting the arms and legs for locusts for five, four, Ted, three, two, and one lower down. Maybe you stack your hands for a pillow and bring your forehead down. Wiggle the hips left and right. Now for this other pose, it's a much deeper back bend. So if you don't really like back bends, it's not your thing. Maybe you have an injury in your lower back or any part of your back really and doesn't feel good, don't do it, obviously. That's the same thing with any pose in yoga. Lily's here too. We're gonna start by bending our knees, reaching back with one hand. The thumb's gonna face up as you reach back, palm facing away from you. And grab the inner part of the shin. Maybe you wanna grab the skin and not your yoga pants, okay? Look over to the other side, thumbs up, palm facing away, grab the shin. I'm sure you feel weird just like I do right now. Then we're gonna press the shins into the hands and lift up for a bow pose. Dhanurasana. You can flex the feet, you can point the toes. Lifting up, pressing for five. You can rock, four, three, two. And stay if you can. This is an added bonus pose, something that David did in his video that I really liked and I've never done before. You can start to rock side to side and see if you topple over whew, on one side. It's kind of fun. And it's oddly comfortable if you already have bow pose. So see if you can topple over to one side and come back. See if you can rock over, excuse me, Lily, to the other side. And come back. Lift up again to finish and lower down. Stack your hands for a pillow, forehead to the floor, wiggle the hips left and right. Mm -hmm. Take a few breaths. Keep wiggling, feels good for the lower back. Now since we're already here on the ground, we wanna open up the shoulder <clears throat> a little bit. I'll move the block so you can see better. We're gonna take the left arm to the left side but the elbow is gonna be at a 45 degree angle. So left palm on the floor, left elbow on the floor, 40, uh, excuse me, 90 degree angle. We're gonna lift up the hips, shift a little to the right. So we're even further away from the elbow. Right hand to right side, probably off the mat. And we're gonna roll onto our left shoulder, look to the right, and maybe start to lift that right knee off the floor. So we're doing this by pressing our right hand into the floor. If this doesn't feel like much for you, you can always scoot the chest a little more to the right and then try it again. You probably feel in the shoulder though. If it still doesn't feel like enough for you, which I, it's plenty for me because I have interesting shoulder issues. And you maybe start to lift up both knees to the sky. Maybe start to lift that right arm up. Whew. Take a couple of breaths. All the way down. <sighs> All right, let's come back to the center of our mat. Let's see what time it is, okay. Right arm to right side, 90 degree angle with the right elbow. We can scoot our torso to the left of the mat, further away from the right elbow. Left palm comes to the floor, elbow pointing up. We start to roll over onto our right side, lifting the left knee. Now, if you feel this in the shoulder without lifting the knee at all and you just roll a little bit, 
that's totally fine. It shouldn't feel painful. It should feel like a deep stretch. For some of you, the knee will be lifted. If you feel really extreme about it, maybe both knees start to lift. Mine don't lift all the way. Take a few breaths wherever you are. That left hand is just there to keep you balanced for that shoulder opener, some of it wherever you'd like. Take two more breaths. Come all the way down. I'm always sad when that is over. I love that shoulder opener. <sighs> Let's do one more shoulder opener. I'll make it quicker though so we can move on. Left arm reaches the left side all the way out. And then it's uh, going to lift up a little bit so it's at a 45 degree angle reaching diagonally to the front left corner. Same, pretty much the same thing as the other side, but you'll feel it in a different spot. Right hand comes underneath the right shoulder. You roll onto the left side. Oh. Now as you do this, try to have that left thumb come up towards the sky. Maybe make a fist with the thumbs up and have the thumb facing the ceiling as you come into this pose. Maybe you start to look up towards the sky or your ceiling. <sighs> Take a couple breaths. Come back down. Other side, right arm reaches diagonally front and right. Left hand underneath the left shoulder, roll to the right side. Make that fist with the right hand, thumb pointing up. Take a few breaths. Come back down. <sighs> Let's go ahead and take seal pose. One of my favorite yin poses to take, which we usually don't try to uh, mix yin and vinyasa because they do very different things for the fascia tissue. Um, yin opens up deep fascia tissue, all that deep connective tissue, and vinyasa kind of warms up the muscles. And if you warm up the muscles, when you do, then you do yin, it kind of doesn't do what yin's supposed to do. But I think this is an exception because we're working with the spine and the lower back, which definitely could use a little bit of yin love. So we're gonna pretend like we're coming into cobra. So hands underneath the shoulders. But then the palms will go forward. Let's start with um, like six inches. So they're not underneath the shoulders. Then we press into the palms and you can lock the elbows. At first, we're gonna engage the core and the glutes. So suck everything in, <laughs> release the glutes and the core. <sighs> so you definitely come down and you'll feel your shoulders sinking kind of in towards your shoulder blades, like your shoulder blades kind of touching almost. You'll feel a light compression in the lower spine. If it's not a light compression of the lower spine, then you wanna walk your hands a little bit more forward until you feel a gentle compression. Now it's okay to have a light compression of the lower spine, just as it's okay to have a light compression with our elbows locked right here, that's compression of the joint as well, which can actually be good for um, connective tissue, can be good for your joints, fluid in the joint, et cetera. So not all compression is bad. If this doesn't feel like much, you can start to walk the hands closer towards you. You can play with this pose being less passive and more active by again, clenching the butt cheeks, clenching the glutes, sucking the belly button in. You can also play with that thing we started with, which I will post the name of it later as I look it up and I'll be so mad at myself for forgetting. You can take a deep breath in, breath out. Hold it out, suck the belly in, and see how that feels on your lower back. For me, it feels like a huge relief in the lower back. It feels very relaxing, and sometimes I can get a little healthy crack, a good kind of crack out of the lower back. Start to come down. So now it's about time to start thinking about finishing up and I do want to do one workshop photo or excuse me workshop pose with you and if you've taken my class before which I'm sure many of you have 
you know that I'm obsessed with forearm stands. Recently, um, actually handstands, but forearm stands, I love those too. So if you have your block, grab it. If you don't, see if you have a book about the width of, let's see. If you don't have a block, make two L's, one is backwards, obviously, in front of you. So you wanna do it thumb to thumb, thumb to uh, armpit like we did before. So crossing your hands like I'm doing right now. Elbows lift, lift the hands. So you wanna find a book about that big, right? Which for me is perfectly this size. So go ahead and just watch for now, cause I'll show you. If you have a wall, highly recommend getting a wall because then you can take the next step in this pose and maybe start to balance. If you don't have a wall, no problem. We're just gonna take it a little bit easier on coming into the prep pose, okay? So here's if you have the wall. Oh, excuse me. So we're coming into our <clears throat> thumb to armpit on each side to find alignment here. Dolphin pose is that downward talk. Again, we can bring one foot to the center and start to find balance in one foot. Not really balance so much as is getting used to this feeling. You'll know which sides are dominant. Usually it's the leg of the arm you use. And then you can really just stay here. And this goes for not using the wall as well. Stay here. This can be how you prep for this pose. You maybe start to lift the heels up. Exhale down. Lifting the heels up and down. Now here's where I definitely want you to be listening because there's different ways to hurt yourself in this pose like anything in yoga, right? So I'll show you a no-no, no-no, I feel like I have a two-year-old, when it comes to doing this pose. And I, as you probably know, if you've taken my class, I call it chaos and donkey kicks. Donkey kicks are a very specific kind of chaos, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, this is the donkey kick. This looks pretty bad, right? I know you want to get up there in that pose. I know you want to balance but not bringing um, control into your pose puts you at risk to injure yourself, injure your head and your spine, and can cause serious damage to your body, obviously. So take it seriously, right? General chaos is the donkey kick, just kind of just jumping around and not really thinking about control. So in order to bring control into this pose, it depends on where you are in your practice. This could be where you stop. You might stop here, one leg. You might start to kick. Maybe you start little hops. This is great control right here. Notice how my legs are straight more or less, especially the top one. If you do start to find a little bit of air, maybe that wall will help you, okay? Go ahead and whew, in your child's pose. So if you're not already practicing that, go ahead and find your wall or find exactly where you are. Try not to use donkey kicks or chaos. And I'm gonna see if anyone here is looks like looking. I'm gonna look at y'all, see how you're doing. Nice Laura using the wall. Um, and Kathy using control. Thank you all for being safe. Appreciate it. <sighs> Take a couple more breaths. And everyone comes down into the pose. Take a child's pose. Your heart's probably gonna be beating really fast because you're doing all these jumps. Mine is just from watching you. If you have your block and you're in child's pose, go ahead, just bring the block into your forehead. Roll it side to side, feels really nice. And it's about time to complete our practice. So after you're done with your child's pose, we're just gonna come onto our backs. Thank God, because you might have a little lightheadedness from jumping up and down. 
find your final pose. I always like to let you choose what this is because for some people it's very specific. Sometimes you need a little bit of an idea. I like a good plow pose, especially if there's a wall. Place your feet on the wall behind you. Press the feet into it. Arms on the floor. Feels kind of nice. You can bend the knees a little bit too. You take a happy baby. You can pet your kitty. And eventually find your way down to Shavasana, corpse pose. Take a deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Another breath. Exhale. <sighs> One more breath in. Exhale. Natural breath. Maybe you want to bring your right hand over your chest, left hand over your belly. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just remind yourself and show gratitude in your life to your body, your health, people that you love, your friends, people that fill you with joy and hope. Maybe your nieces and nephews and kids. Just think of those little things that give you joy as well. Deep breath in. Exhale. Roll into one side. And meet me in a seated position. Press your hands on your knees. Enjoying the stillness, maybe the silence. Your hands to heart center. Again, showing gratitude for everything that you have and love. The light and dark in me loves and honors the light and dark in you. Together we say, namaste. The cat's gone. Thank you all for joining me.